recording. So here goes. My presentation is based on some of my past and present activities, as well as my work-based doctorate. There's links to videos and websites illustrating this presentation in your schedules and on the Aspire website. You can look at those afterwards and you're welcome to contact me via email that's there too. And I can just see that Emma is connecting and I've just thanked you, Emma. <laughs> so my intention is to inspire and challenge you by presenting information and thoughts that are beneficial for children, young people and all adults um, as dance can be a main activity for everyone's in everyone's lives and throughout them. However, I am emphasising active older people's dance because that's what I've been involved in since leaving full time work in 2008 when I was 60 years old. So stay muted, please, throughout the presentation, but you can pin me or ask, or you can look at gallery view to see everyone else. So let me make it clear to begin with, I believe in choices, opportunities and resources being available. Dance activities have to be accessible, well promoted and safe and led by trained facilitators. If people want to participate in ballroom dancing, line dancing, aerobics, hip hop, ballet, or whatever, that's great by me, more the merrier. But my presentation today focuses on creative contemporary dance. I'm not proposing that everybody must dance, but if they want to, there should be opportunities to do so. Until recently, dance in the developed world has been at a disadvantage. Dance transverses so many different sectors, arts, culture, sports and fitness, leisure, entertainment, education, health, well-being, history and socialising. But it's not a top priority in any of them. For example, in the UK, dance and drama are higher art priorities and soccer and cricket are higher in the sports sector. In academia, it's only relatively recently that dance is, was considered an academic subject in its own right. In UK schools, dance is now usually within the physical education department. And although there are dance opportunities in some schools, it's not included in many children's education. Intellectual pursuits are often more highly regarded than intangible, physical and arts activities. Only some children and young people attend dance activities in their free time and often stop once homework, computers and social media take up more time. Cutbacks during the last decade have led to many community social spaces being closed down and dance needs space and reasonable flaws. Most adults and many young people nowadays are far more sedentary and dancing is not part of their lives at all. But change is happening, although progress is patchy. New solutions are needed as many social issues, including loneliness, obesity, people living longer, poverty affecting life chances are problematic and change must happen. Social and political decision and policy makers are increasingly considering dance activities more seriously. It has many physical, cognitive, social, emotional and spiritual benefits for individuals and communities. More research, including neuroscience, is showing that it ticks so many boxes for health and well-being. Cultural activities bring people together to have more meaningful lives, as the COVID lockdown restrictions have vividly highlighted 
how people wish to socialize with friends, neighbors and families. Creative dance is beneficial for all, from youngest children to adults of any age. It doesn't involve learning a specific technique to a high level. Fac facilitators might be trained dance artists, choreographers, dance therapists, dance instructors, leaders, or teachers. After warming up, dance tasks are suggested and carried out individually or interacting in pairs or in large or small groups. For example, moving in space at different levels or interpreting songs and music, using different movement qualities, interpreting stories, poetry, pictures, or using props. Learning, you can learn set choreography too by copying and or interpreting it in different ways. Finally, everyone cools down together at the end. I left my full-time management career in 2008 because I wanted to dance again and return to community activities, whilst I had good health and lots of energy. I didn't know what that would mean in practice. I intended to use my managerial skills and expertise with some paid and voluntary work. I was an adult who wanted to dance and see what life brings and move to the next stage of my working life. However, I soon realized that there wasn't much dance available for the likes of me, and I could so easily be regarded as an OAP and marginalized. Well, I wasn't going to accept that. 12 years on, I remain busy, not retired, and life generally has been beyond my expectations. I'm an older dancer, an advisor, mentor, and a grandmother, and a wife. <laughs> I have developed my dance capabilities by attending classes and workshops, performed in several London older people's dance companies, and performed in, on some of the leading London dance stages. I founded and managed a successful grassroots dance organization for active older people, Creative Dance 60 Plus. And for the rest of the presentation, it's going to be CD 60 Plus. Being involved in communities and organizations mainly concerned with aging and older people's creative arts. I'm having a great time. There is life after full-time work, for you younger ones to keep in mind. My personal interest turned out to be timely. Dance and other participatory arts are now rising up social and political agendas. I know that active older people's creative dance is a mouthful, but it does give a boundary. It's not for children, younger dancers or frail, vulnerable adults. In 2010, I began a work-based doctorate in professional studies. But what was my work? My activities then were ad hoc and insecure. However, I did have access to older people who were choosing to dance as I was attending by then regular dance sessions and a member of a dancers, older dancers performing company. So my research's first aspect was in-depth interviews with older dancers from different parts of London and a city in south uh, in southwest of England. The second aspect was my various committee and advisory work. And the third aspect was desktop research across various academic disciplines, including dance, social gerontology, and uh, community development. These aspects were critically analyzed, and after many drafts, many, <laughs> and challenges, synthesized into an exploratory case study. And the, first, uh, the final transdisciplinary thesis report 
was active older people participating in creative dance, challenging perceptions. And I graduated from Middlesex um, University in December 2017. In 2009, the BBC broadcasted a television programme about the Company of Elders, Sadler's Wells established Older People's Dance Company. And this programme stimulated interest all over the UK. I attended an associated workshop at Sadler's Wells and my journey to return to dance began. In 2004, Strictly Come Dancing was first televised. Over the years, it's popularised ballroom and dance generally. Raising Dance's profile and other television uh, programmes popularising dance and participatory art have followed since. So, who are older people? Over 50 to 105 plus is a huge cohort. Yet often over 50 or over 65s are, are used for describing all older adults or for gathering statistics and data. How old is old? What image of an older person or of an old person springs to mind at the moment in your head? Many outdated stereotypes and images of OAPs or seniors are prevalent. Some are patronising, some are hostile and even rude, and some are positive. Language hasn't caught up yet. Chronological age ranges are not the answer. We're all individuals living in different circumstances with different backgrounds, identities, personalities, education, health, different financial access to financial resources and interests and living in different locations. We're not the same and our preferences and needs differ. Many older people do not consider themselves to be old and have reasonably good health. Many contribute to society, for example, caring for grandchildren or elderly relatives or volunteering and or paid work. There are challenges that affect everyone as they age, loss of loved ones and friends and physiological changes. And resources need to be available to give support when required. Increasing numbers of old people want to dance, either returning after their full-time working life or bringing up families, or they want to try something new, or they remember how they bopped when they were teenagers. But opportunities have to be available to them. Such people were the focus of my research. Unlike the stereotypes, they can look forward to perhaps decades of productive life ahead of them. I founded CD60 Plus in Tottenham, where I live, to share my passion for dancing with older people from diverse backgrounds. CD60 Plus was not a case study for my research, but it did inform it. Weekly sessions have continued successfully, although at presently they're on Zoom. Sorry, I've just lost my place. <laughs> No. Um, and from the start, it had a welcoming approach where everyone is respected for who they are. There's a trusting, enabling environment. It's not competitive and it's not judgmental. Everyone's equal. Everyone enjoys high quality dance sessions. New friendships develop and there's humour and fun as well. Over time, it's been funded by grants, various grants, participants who are able pay a small fee for each session attended. Friendly socialising happens in the mid break 
and afterwards. Over time, I managed and promoted these sessions, appointed and encouraged different young dance artists to facilitate. They had freedom to lead and encourage participants to develop their dance capabilities, be creative and enjoy dancing together. After six, success, uh, after six successful years, CD60 Plus continued to thrive. I handed over the organization to the dance artist who was facilitating at the time. Since 2018, it's been incorporated into Creative Dance London, a dynamic organization run by young dance artists and entrepreneurs. It's going from strength to strength, although, of course, presently on Zoom, but hopes to offer in-person and online sessions in the future for adults of all ages, including some specifically for older dancers. Being a member of an older dancers performing company is a different experience. A dance company requires regular attendance, time to create, learn and rehearse repertoire and work closely with the da uh, dance director or choreographer, as well as members having the desire, commitment and confidence to perform. In the last 10 years, there have been some successful older people's dance festivals and conferences giving opportunities for performances and promoting older people's dance. And now there are also courses for dance practitioners of all types who want to lead um, older people's dance sessions. There's also a growing community of older dancers, many attending several dance sessions a week. But dance opportunities are not available everywhere. Since COVID, one advantage of the proliferation of Zoom online sessions is that anyone can attend regardless of where they live in the UK or internationally. And a, variety, and a wider variety of facilitators and dance providers are offering dance experiences. Historically, professional dancers have been young and live with well-developed physical uh, technique, but this is changing. For example, there are established dance companies now involving disabled dancers. And now, gradually, there's recognition that older people's dance can be mainstreamed too. For example, CD60 Plus and Creative Dance London recently appeared in an article on the One Dance UK Lead Bodies website. Soon after handing over CD60 Plus, I found out I had breast cancer, leading me to another dance organization, Move Dance Feel, aimed at people involved with cancer, whether carers, patients, or post-treatment. These sessions led by excellent dance facilitators were caring, empathetic, friendly, and enjoyable. I didn't worry if I was tired or felt vulnerable and could continue dancing even though I was going through chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Dance opportunities are available for other medical conditions or chronic conditions, for example, Parkinson's and, and also for frail, vulnerable people. Dance for Health is gaining recognition, complementing medical treatment and an alternative to some medical prescribing. And I'm sure that dancing did help me flow through my cancer treatment. Nowadays, care homes are required to organize activities for their residents, giving more opportunities for young, uh, for job opportunities. Um, and that can include dancing or singing, music, and arts activities. Older people's dance classes are often, still unfortunately, often promoted as gentle, 
gracious exercise or just for fun or something to do or it makes fall you know aiding um fall prevention but it can be so much more than that organizers have been surprised to see fit enthusiastic people turn up older people have lived in their bodies and know their limitations many want to dance be expressive move with others in studios and large spaces not just on the spot rather than bop on their own in small spaces at home although we've all been expert at that during covid in my research some older dancers expressed pleasure and appreciated working with talented young dance artists patronizing inappropriate language and being told continually to be careful or you might fall down are not well received. Health and safety announcements at the beginning of sessions is just good practice to do that regardless, but not constantly throughout the sessions. Of course, older people can attend general adult classes too. But for many older adults, the pace, memory and movement expectations are beyond them. So many pref um, prefer sessions specifically aimed at them, where they can develop their dance capabilities, be expressive, embodied, move and dance in their own ways at a pace that suits them. Intergenerational projects where children, adults of all ages um, can come together can be very enjoyable and worthwhile. Positive relationships between generations develop and many older and young people enjoy being together. Tasks can be creative and lots of fun and projects advance over time and be exhilarating, enthusiastic, and performances that are really good can be created. Older people's dance is definitely a social phenomenon, it's the new one, and growing. There's demand for different types of dance that's accessible, and universities, colleges, and independent dance providers are recognizing that older people, as well as younger ones, can dance and move. In, and, and they're therefore offering um, new opportunities for training and dancing. And in schools, children and young people could have more opportunities to dance and move, benefiting them in the present, but also preparing them to dance and exercise throughout their lives. It also encourages learning together expressing oneself without using um, speech, which helps some children, problem solving, being adaptable and growing in confidence. So in this brief presentation, I hope I've challenged your assumptions and perceptions about older people dancing, to think about new ways to offer dance opportunities to children and adults and think positively about your own future. You can aspire to be a dancer throughout your life, remaining flexible in mind and body, healthy and connected. Increasingly, children and adults will be expected to take more responsibility for their health and well-being. So from the youngest to the oldest in all communities, there should be more opportunities to dance. Dance on. More dance towards a more peaceful world. Thank you. <laughs> now, well, I'm not, um, I don't want you not to go to your next session, but I, um, we, we can go on a bit longer if people want to stay and we can kind of, um, questions or chat or something what do people want to do
because there's not that many of us. So if you all un... That was fantastic, Jackie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Jackie. Much appreciated. Uh, well, I, I've tried. <laughs> thank you. No, it's great. Well. Thank you. Thank you yeah, so it would much. Be great, it'd be great if one day we can actually have an event like this. We can all just have a massive dance in the evening, wouldn't it? Maybe some square dancing, some yeah. disco, some Absolutely. bit of everything. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Philip's up for that. I've always wanted to do... When I was when I was young, I I grew up in a little country town in Ludlow in Shropshire, and there was no disco, there was no party place. But I used to love every year a man used to come to the town with a big ten gallon hat and a speaker and a sound system and teach us to square dance over the evening. And what was great for me as a young boy was that um, we, we actually got to hold a girl's hand halfway through the evening, yeah. and by the end of it, put our arm around her waist, and it was that physical connection of of, of other people. It's very, very special. So I think you've captured into it. And it doesn't go out of date with age, does it? You know, it's a human connection that we're all the same age in our minds, you know? Yeah, yeah I mean, one of the things that um, I realised when I, I went to um, one of my um, children's, I went to a party once there, and none of them were dancing. Whereas when I was young, if you went to any party, everybody would dance. And, and one of the people in my research said that, you know, after they used to have formal meetings at their cricket club, they'd then push back the tables and everybody would <laughs> dance. Well, I mean, you know, people just don't do that now, you know. I know, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? Such a shame. Yeah. I, mean, I remember going to Venezuela years ago and um, I, was, I was there on my own traveling and at the end of the night in the disco, it was all awful Western music for the first part of the evening, Wham and Madonna at the time. And then at midnight, they started playing all the merengue and everybody just broke out dancing. Yeah. <laughs> and it was, it, was, it was just incredible. You know, it's absolutely incredible. What, what, um, that, that just to, it was a spectacle. I've never seen anything like it. And everybody was dancing with everybody else. There was no fighting. Yeah. There was a bit of competitiveness between the men dancing with the women. And uh, there was always one woman dancing and the men would drop in. And it was just incredible. I've never, and the only time I've ever seen anything like it, funnily enough, was break dancing. Yeah. When you go to when you used to go to nightclubs and they'd create a circle and one guy would break dance and everybody'd watch. And it was a communal experience watching that person commenting cheering them on there's a little bit of rivalry i mean it's a fantastic dynamic isn't it really is yeah very very special no thank you for that jackie it was lovely oh well a pleasure you know I, I love to spread the word you know i i i'm at the position in life where i can go to a seminar or conference and say what i like and um you know and, and sometimes challenge uh, some of the, the the formal ideas that are going on of what should be done and I go yeah but what about you know because I've got nothing to lose I'm just a free agent now so so it's so uh, I'm sorry I missed the start of your talk I just kind of walked in what what what's your do you have an organization or are you no just, no no, no I'm in? just a free spirit now um but there's um on the website there's um some videos and um websites um and also there's my email address there is my email address there, um, but you'll see some of the stuff I'm up to. And in my blurb, it kind of says as well, you know. How about Philip? You still awake, Philip? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Philip's been to some classes, haven't you, recently? Absolutely, absolutely. I've been, I've been, I've been on your journey at, at, on the sidelines. You have. Oh, thank you very much. Well done. Well done. <laughs> Great. Wonderful. And and Yanel is a wonderful young choreographer and dance artist. And uh, we've done some things together, haven't we, um, Yanel? Yeah. You want to say anything? Yeah, it was really great to hear another kind of full brush through your, your activities and the range of things that you've been involved in just recently. It's really, really good to hear. And also how all of these things are developing in their own ways as well. Yeah, well, it's lovely to um, to see these things develop. Um, I'm a great believer in when something's thriving, that's when you hand it on. You know, I don't like it to become a chore. Um, uh, and also, I think um, if it's thriving, then people can um, do it, you know, take it forward in their own way. And that's what's happened with Creative Dance London. And so it's lovely just to be in the background and they can always contact me. But, you know, I go along and dance at their sessions. But, you know, it, it, that's really lovely too. How about Peter? Are you still... <laughs> Are you dancing? Uh, no, no, I'm not dancing. <laughs> but I've admired what you've been doing, of course. 
And um, I just wondered whether you talked a bit about the barriers and the re of resources and ideas and attitudes in your research, but I wondered what sort of personal barriers people experience before they would take that step. I haven't taken that step. No. Um, probably all sorts of reasons why not. But I wondered if you're in your research, you came out with any right. uh, wisdom about this. Well, um, it, at CD60 Plus, for example, there um, at the beginning, there were people who turned up and then as soon as they saw it wasn't ballroom dancing, that wasn't for them. <clears throat> and then um, within CD60 Plus, there are some people who definitely like following um, set routines, as it were. Yes. Um, and they didn't like um, doing more creative things at all. And some, and you know, and so then you say, well, okay, if you, you know, it might be better if you went to a line dancing session and you can mm. point them in the right direction. Mm. But what um, um, is so pleasing is that in CD60 Plus, there are some people, um, because, you know, Tottenham's a very wide, I mean, we all, I know all of you now, so, you know, it's a very wide area with a very diverse population. And you can imagine who turned up to the class, you know, what are, uh, there could be people who were um, therapists and academics or had leading professional lives. And then you've also got people who are school assistants or, um, unemployed or um, uh, I, one who's now a dear friend of mine um, w was um, a kind of um, support worker in a, in a prison, West Indian woman. Mm. And for her, for example, to come along to a dance class, yeah. um, she was dragged along by her sister and, mm. uh, and, and didn't know what it was all about at all. But once she got hooked, you know, she's now coming six years, seven years later regularly. Um, and is a fantastic dancer and is doing really creative things. So um, what I think what's very important is that you do have to have the right atmosphere. And, you know, and I did have to go up and say quiet words to some of the more professional people who thought that they knew everything and could boss other people around and say, you're not doing that properly or go and line up over there. And I said to them, no, we're all here equal. And it has to be that kind of... Um, uh, atmosphere, welcoming atmosphere created yeah. that means that everybody is as good as each other. And the lovely thing about creative dance, of course, is that there's no right or wrong. So um, it's obviously up to the dance facilitator how you get that out of people and how you can do things together. Um, but I think if it's if people feel comfortable and and see us, then that's the, that's what you want to aim for. Yeah. Uh, and it does work. I mean, that CD60 Plus has is, is gone on for 10 years. Small grass organisation, it, it says something because there aren't, and, it, and it's diverse as well. And although it's, you know, the different people come at different times, it, it has been successful. Um, and it's lovely to see, you know. Sure it is. Yeah. Yes. Um, it yeah. strikes me, sorry. Now, my, my question would be to do with the fact that we're coming out of COVID, mm -hmm. slowly but surely, um, and whether you think that there's an opportunity here with a lot of still a lot of blended operations where there's going to be in-person and online activity, yeah. whether this is an opportunity mm. to really, um, on the one hand, to go for it on that basis, but also you know, thinking about the possibility of a real... Um, uh, creative response, in a sense, to coming out of COVID, as in a uh, hundred years ago, coming out of the flu epidemic. Yeah, I, I mean, that's definitely been a discussion that I've had with um, my fellow dancers who I dance with. Um, some of them have found COVID really wonderful um, because for what uh, for a number of reasons, medical reasons, or they're caring for someone at home, um, or they haven't been well, you know, whatever. They they like the idea of online sessions, and and most probably will want them to continue afterwards. I can't wait to get back to live sessions again. I mean, this whole thing of doing things on your own in your front room, however good they are. Um, it's not the same as being able to interact with each other and get the energy from each other. Um, and there's other people who think that. So 
you know, so at the one hand, you've got people who are very keen to get back to live classes, and then you've got others who, you know, don't want that. Also, of course, I mean, we have people now in, in the C, um, Creative Dance London who are zooming in from America um, and from Europe, you know, well, uh, um, or um, we've got somebody in um, Edinburgh, someone else in Derbyshire, you know, all that kind of thing. So having Zoom sessions means that people can actually find um, facilitators that they really like um, and doing the kind of dance they want to do and stay doing it. So there's those new opportunities too. So I think most probably what will happen, and perhaps Yanel will be able to say more than this because she's creating new things as well, we'll most probably do a mixture of both. Um, so there'll be a chance for people to come together locally or you know within a written not necessarily in a neighborhood but you know can get to it um and then there'll be others who um uh, and at the same time there'll also be other sessions online so what do you think you know you'll have to unmute yeah i think that's definitely the model that we're going for with a few of the organizations that i teach dance for so we do have 